Big new developments now in the Michael Jackson wrongful death trial. The pop star's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, is being forced to testify about his drug use. KCAL 9's Cara Finstrom is live in downtown L.A. with the very latest from the courtroom. Cara. Debbie Rowe is now on the stand inside this courthouse testifying in this wrongful death trial. We did get some video we want to share with you now of her going into the courthouse earlier this morning. She has shunned the spotlight since divorcing Michael Jackson decades ago and said nothing as she went inside. She is now answering questions from AEG lawyers who want to know about Jackson's drug use during the 1990s when they were married and she traveled with him. She also bore his two oldest children during that time. Now our reporter inside the courtroom right now says Roe has just told jurors that Michael had a very low tolerance to pain and that his fear of pain was incredible. She also said that made him vulnerable to doctors who thought who he thought knew best and may have taken advantage of him. Roe first met Jackson while working as a nurse for an LA doctor who treated him. The 54 year old who gave up her parental rights to the children they shared has reportedly played a new role in their lives since Jackson's death. Now any testimony she provides today about his drug use decades ago could be significant because AEG wants to show Jackson was responsible for his own death. The Jackson family maintains AEG is because they say the company oversaw the doctor who delivered that death drug overdose. We heard from the Jackson family attorney as he headed into court. I think Debbie's going to be great. That was attorney Brian Parrish as he referred to Rose anticipated anticipated rather testimony. There has been questioning about whether she might be a hostile witness for AG lawyers because she is supportive, has been, of the Jackson family in recent months. Again, we do have a, an, a, a reporter up in the uh, courtroom right now. Randy Page is up there and he will be continuing to provide us with updates throughout the day. A crucial day today in court as entertainment promoter AEG plans to call Michael Jackson's ex-wife to testify in the singer's family's wrongful death lawsuit. CBS News Cara Finstrom this morning live in downtown LA with a preview of what to expect. Cara? This is all set to resume just before 11 o'clock this morning with Debbie Rowe expected to take the stand. She's largely stayed out of the spotlight since divorcing the pop star decades ago, but she will be thrust back in it today. AEG's lawyers want to question her about the pop star's drug use back during the 1990s. That's when the two were married and she traveled with him and bore his two oldest children. Rowe is now 54 and lives on a Palmdale horse farm. She first met Jackson while working as a dermatology nurse in LA for a doctor who was treating the same. Her. Any testimony from her about drug use during the 90s could be important because AEG wants to show Jackson's own actions led to his fate and that they're not responsible. The Jackson family claims they are because they hired the doctor who administered that fatal dose of propofol. Yesterday in court, attorneys on both sides continue to present opposing pictures of the singer's financial situation. Family attorneys have stated Jackson could have earned billions if he lived, but AEG's expert financial witness estimated Jackson's death at about 400 million and question whether he could have provided any support. If the figure here of any damages is what would he have given the children, what would he have given his mother, he could only give them what he might reasonably have received. And what we see from the mass of debt is that would have been a very small figure indeed if that was even going to occur. The whole debt issue is only being offered to smear Michael's character because it has nothing to do with his ability to earn money in the future and nothing to do with the fact that he always took care of his mom and kids and loved his mom and kids and put them ahead of everybody else. We've heard Roe, by the way, testify about her ex-husband before. She came to Michael Jackson's defense during his molestation trial in 2005. And at that time, she claimed her ex-husband was a supportive and loving father. Jackson was later acquitted, if you'll remember, of all those charges. So it'll be very interesting to hear what she has to say today. And, of course, we will have this trial covered for you. Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, will be taking the stand today in the pop icon's wrongful death trial. She's expected to be questioned about Jackson's drug use during the 1990s when they were a couple. Eyewitness News reporter Christina Salvo joins us live from the courthouse with the very latest. Christina. Well, John, yesterday testimony focused on Michael Jackson's financial situation. To today, it turns once again back to his prescription drug use, specifically, though, focusing on the 1990s when he and Debbie Rowe were married and she gave birth to his first two children. Uh, she was scheduled to testify twice before, but today is the day she's actually going to be taking the stand. Now, she did walk into court uh, about 10 minutes ago or so, and AEG is calling her to the stand to testify about the late pop star's use and possible abuse 
of prescription drugs. AEG wants to show that Jackson had drug problems as far back as the early 1990s. Yesterday, the plastic surgeon who performed surgery on the star in 1993 testified via video saying he was concerned by Jackson's continued demand for Percocet. The surgery was to remove a scar caused by an accident in 1984 when Jackson's hair caught on fire while he was filming a Pepsi commercial. Now, though the surgery happened three years before Jackson wed Roe, she was present during the surgery. And later that year, Jackson announced he was cutting his dangerous tour short to enter rehab. My friends and doctors advised me to seek professional guidance immediately in order to eliminate what has become an addiction. It is time for me to acknowledge my need for treatment in order to regain my health. Now, what AG wants to show is that Jackson's use of medications and prescription drugs was habitual and, in, and that his death, in part, was caused by his own behavior. Of course, the lawsuit claims that AG was negligent in Michael Jackson's death, and Catherine Jackson, as well as Michael Jackson's three children, are the ones bringing this lawsuit against them. Well, back here in Southern California, Michael Jackson's former wife is in court today testifying in the wrongful death lawsuit against AEG. KTLA's Jim Nash is live in downtown L.A. with more on Debbie Rowe's appearance. Hi, Jim. Yeah, hi, Carol and Glenn. You know, uh, Debbie Rowe has testified this morning that Michael Jackson's various doctors were actually competing to treat him, often with very addictive pain medications. She even said that they were trying to outbid each other. Guys, make way. Good morning, Ms. Rose. Thank you very much. Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, didn't talk with reporters as she entered the courthouse this morning. Although she's been called by AEG, which is defending itself in this trial, she, she's considered a hostile witness because in the past, she reportedly told her psychiatrist after hearing of AEG's 50 concert tour that they had booked with Jackson, quote, they're going to kill him. Rose, the mother of Michael Jackson's two oldest children, Paris and Prince. Today, on the stand, she told the jury that Jackson's doctors took advantage of Jackson's pain from a severe scalp burn that he suffered while shooting a Pepsi commercial in which a light exploded right over his head. Rose says Jackson deeply respected doctors and was vulnerable to doctors because of that trust. The superstar's mother, Katherine Jackson, and his three children are suing AEG for billions. Mrs. I should correct that, up to a billion dollars. Mrs. Jackson has told the jury that the concert promoter hired the doctor who's been convicted of causing Jackson's death. The pop icon died at his L.A. home after being given a lethal dose of the powerful anesthetic propofol. Dr. Conrad Murray, of course, is now in prison. So Debbie Rowe blames most of doc uh, Jackson's doctors collectively for his death. But will the jury agree that the doctor who's already convicted in Jackson's death, Dr. Conrad Murray, because he was hired, or was he hired by AEG, that seems to be the crux of this. Uh, everybody that's testified on both sides in this trial have agreed that Michael Jackson was highly susceptible to addictive pain medications. But where does this go? This four-month-long trial continues this afternoon, where we're live in downtown Los Angeles. Um, why did AEG Live call Debbie Rowe? What were they hoping for in her testimony? Well, they, they want her to establish their narrative, and that is that Michael Jackson was abusing drugs for decades, but nobody knew about it except for very, for very inner, inner, inner circle. His family didn't know, and AEG absolutely didn't know when they hired him to do this concert tour. Now, we didn't know what to expect from Debbie Rowe uh, because she was thought of as maybe a, almost a combative witness. She didn't want to be here, uh, but 45 minutes in, boy, oh boy, uh, she is delivering a lot of information about Michael Jackson and his drug use. Uh, we had to just break for lunch, but she, she talked about first establishing a relationship with Jackson and then went through after the Pepsi incident. Remember when he burned his hair in that yeah. accident during a Pepsi commercial? Uh, he, she said after that, that's when the pain meds started in. And she said there were competing doctors going after each other, trying to basically uh, impressed Michael Jackson with how they could control pain. She said that his 
tolerance was so low and his fear of pain was so high that these doctors would compete and they were like vultures. She at one point said these idiots were going back and forth competing with each other. Uh, she broke down in tears a few times. We've gotten to the point just before he went on to her in Europe, and this is what AEG wants to come out. We'll get it back after the lunch break. Uh, they want her to talk about how he was using Dippervan or Propofol to rest during this concert tour. Again, establishing that he was a drug addict for decades, but only a few people knew about it. Okay, Ted, roll up. There goes the car alarm. So I will ask you. I will ask you a second yeah, question. Very annoying. I, was, I was waiting for that. Uh, <laughs> nice job, by the way. Uh, quickly, it, just because we really rarely see her, we know she has this relationship with, with Paris Jackson. Um, how did she seem? How did she appear? She uh, appeared very confident, sitting down in the chair and, and taking all the questions, ta telling a few jokes, and then um, uh, and then she broke down in tears, like immediately talking about these doctors and the way that they were prescribing drugs to Michael. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you, she was all over the place, and but very compelling. I'm sure uh, this jury is going to, going to uh, be remembering everything she says yeah. because uh, they were locked in. She was very compelling, and we'll get more after the lunch break. Back here in L.A., Michael Jackson's ex-wife, Debbie Rowe, is the star witness today at the Jackson wrongful death trial. She is being forced to testify about the late star's drug use. KK Nine's Randy Page has details now on what she said on the stand. Debbie Rowe, the biological mother of two of Michael Jackson's children, was in the spotlight today. Come on, guys, make way. Good morning, Ms. Rowe. Thank you. As she was called to the witness stand by lawyers for AEG. Rowe testified she met Jackson while she was working for Beverly Hills dermatologist Dr. Arnold Klein, where Jackson was a longtime patient. She said she first became aware Jackson was receiving painkillers in the early 90s when he received collagen injections. Michael respected doctors immensely, that they went to school, studied, and learned to do no harm, Rowe testified. Unfortunately, some of the doctors decided that when Michael was in pain or something, they would try to outbid each other on who could give the better drugs, so he listened to the doctors. Michael had a very low pain tolerance, Rowe testified. Then she paused, held back tears, and said, his fear of pain was incredible, and I think the doctors took advantage of him that way. Rowe later testified Jackson was given propofol, the anesthetic that later killed him, on 10 occasions over many years when he was receiving collagen treatments. But when asked if she was ever aware of Jackson receiving propofol to help him sleep or to help him deal with stress, she replied no. Debbie Rowe appeared comfortable on the stand, presenting herself to the jurors in a very down-to-earth manner. In fact, I noticed many of the jurors were leaning forward, listening intently to every word of her testimony, testimony which resumes this afternoon. Rowe later testified Jackson was given propofol, the anesthetic that later killed him, on 10 occasions over many years when he was receiving collagen treatments. But when asked if she was ever aware of Jackson receiving propofol to help him sleep or to help him deal with stress, she replied no. That's right, there was some powerful testimony today as Debbie Rowe spoke in great detail about Michael Jackson's battle with powerful painkillers, this from the woman who was by his side for many years. But this afternoon, Roe recounted in great detail about two occasions when she says J Michael Jackson did use propofol to sleep. It was 1997 during the history tour in Munich. She said two German doctors came in, set up an entire surgical suite, it looked like, inside his hotel room and gave him propofol on two separate occasions as he was preparing to perform in Munich. She asked him why he did it. and He said he didn't know what else to do. He was desperate for sleep. Did do you have an understanding that Mr. Jackson would seek the help of doctors to, to get some sleep? Not until we became friends. Okay. And when you became friends, did you then come to have that understanding? Yes. Did he ever discuss it with you? Only when I was there. Okay. And on those occasions, would he say to you, hi, I've got to get some sleep, you come with me while I get some sleep at a doctor's office? Sometimes. And do those include the three times outside of the states that we discussed? I insisted on that. Why did you insist on that? I wanted to make sure he woke up. So you insisted on being present because you wanted to make sure he woke up? Yes. 
Debbie Rowe, the mother of two of Michael Jackson's children, broke into tears on the witness stand today. She talked about Jackson's struggle with pain and with the doctors who treated him. I would assume that Miriam Hernandez was in the courtroom. She joins us live with today's riveting testimony. Miriam. And that's right, David. Jurors for the last t three months have been hearing testimony, much of it from experts talking about drug dependency and the symptoms of it. Well, today, jurors heard from a real insider, Debbie Rowe, talking about her struggle with doctors who she says over-prescribed pain medication for, Jack for Jackson. It took a subpoena to bring Debbie Rowe to court to testify for the defense of AEG Live. The company contends that Michael Jackson's drug dependency led to his death and that his habit began years before he died. Rowe is Jackson's former wife and mother to Prince and Paris. All three children, along with their grandmother, are suing the star's concert promoter for allegedly hiring Dr. Conrad Murray, who provided Jackson with a lethal dose of the anesthetic propofol. Rowe was also a nurse assistant to dermatologist Arnold Klein, who she said provided the painkiller Demerol and propofol for many of the hundreds of treatments Jackson received over 20 years. According to records and evidence, Klein was treating Jackson up until three days before his death. Rowe broke down on the witness stand today, describing Jackson as a victim of doctors competing over a celebrity patient. Quote, Michael respected doctors immensely. Unfortunately, some of the doctors decided that when Michael was in pain that they would try to outdo each other. Who could give the better drug? Unquote. Rowe identified the doctors as Klein and plastic surgeon Stephen Heflin. Rowe, quote, these idiots were going back and forth the whole time and not caring about him. Unquote. Rowe testified that Jackson had trouble sleeping but always seemed to be able to sleep after a doctor's appointment. She said his use of pain meds started with his accident in 1984. His scalp burned filming a Pepsi commercial. In 1993, she described a painful surgery to stretch his scalp and remove scar tissue. Jackson, she said, feared pain and had a low threshold. Klein and Heflin, she said, were providing powerful drugs to the point she consulted with Jackson's internist. She testified that Dr. Alan Metzger designed a plan to wean Jackson off the meds. She told the jury that another doctor foiled the effort as Jackson left on the dangerous tour, that he rejected Metzger's directions. Within months, Jackson announced that he was entering rehab for addiction to pain medication. And the claim of the plaintiffs is that Jackson's history with medications is not relevant. They say that his death was caused by a convergence of three factors, Murray, Propofol, and AEG. Debbie Rowe remains on the stand testing.